Hi, and today I want to share with you a skill to be used with clients that have experienced um, trauma of some sort. And whether they've reported it to you or you know it from the client log or from the records that you've received, uh, this, this may be useful. Sometimes clients that have experienced trauma or what we call complex trauma, they've gone through multiple therapy experiences, episodes, and uh, that can be um, in, in and of itself difficult for the client. This skill essentially is to move the client out of the past, validate the past, and then start to open the door to the future, which holds possibility. Now, I was introduced to this skill by Chris Iveson in, in a lecture that he had given. And Chris Iveson is a master therapist out in London, and he is a founder of the, the Brief International out there. And so they are a solution-focused practice and, and uh, training center. And so essentially, uh, while Chris was sharing this story, um, I found this to be incredibly useful for my own clients, so I want to share it with you. So he, he basically had been contracted as a consultant, and when he, um, you know, he was contracted to work with this woman who was suicidally depressed, she kept on saying she just couldn't get over what had happened, so she was just going to kill herself. And so Chris listened intensely, and he crafted a miracle question to correspond to the pain in this woman's life. And essentially, he asked the woman, he said, okay. It's like, well, would it be all right if I ask you a bizarre question? And she said, sure. She said, but nothing's going to change my mind. I, I made up my mind to kill myself. And he said, okay, I'm, I just, can I ask you this question? And she said, sure, that's fine. And so he said, well, tonight, pretend you, you know, when you go to sleep tonight, a miracle happens. And the miracle is this. The past is no longer messing with your future. Now, tomorrow you wake up, will be the first thing that tells you that that's happened, that the past is no longer in, in the way of your future. It's no longer messing with your future. And the woman's mind started to shift gears. And she said, well, I'd probably have the energy to get out of bed. I probably wouldn't want to kill myself. You know, I'd eat my breakfast here at the hospital. And so the details now started to compound. And details... Details create emotion, and emotion creates motivation, and motivation, you know, inspires more hope and change in attitude. And that story that that woman weaved from that, you know, that question of, you know, what would be the first sign that the past is no longer messing with your future, that got that woman out of the hospital. They got the woman to move towards a preferred future. And so it seems contrary, you know, and in many ways, a lot of the things that work, you know, they work because they're intentional, they're deliberate, and they're respectful of the client. If Chris would have used the miracle question the way he normally would, or we may many times think of as, you know, it wouldn't have worked at all. She probably would have rejected it. She wasn't, would have been disrespectful to her. Why it worked was because he did it respectfully, and he did it, it was like a personal invitation to the future, just for her just for her. And so I want you to, you know, as you as you think about using this question with your clients, be thoughtful, be intentional, and realize that when you introduce, you know, the miracle question to your clients, whether it's this version or your own version, always see it as an invitation to your clients, a personalized invitation, you know, to them to the future. And if it's not personal to them, then it may necessarily not work. And so, you know, don't fault your client. Listen to your client and don't let your past mess with your future. Thanks.